everyone. It is my absolute joy and pleasure to introduce Magenta Pixie to you. Um, I've known Magenta for some years. We live actually quite close to each other in the south of England, and I have immense respect for her channeling with the nine, which I'm going to be talking about um, in a moment. But um, this is going to be a very interesting conversation because I'm not aware of what Magenta, all that Magenta is going to share with us from her downloads from the nine, her channeling from the nine. Um, so it's going to be first time for me too, which is going to be a wonderful journey. Um, Magenta is a channel for higher dimensional intelligence known as the white winged collective consciousness of nine. And the transmissions she receives from the nine have reached really hundreds of thousands of people over the years via a huge um, video collection on her YouTube channel. She's also an Ascension and Consciousness coach. She's author of six best-selling books, which is pretty impressive. Her latest one, which I'm really looking forward to reading, is The Diamond Codex and the Quartz Key. And her first book, Masters of the Matrix, is a book authority winner in all categories. Best spirituality books of all time and best consciousness books of all time as well. And I'll put all of her information below the video at magentapixie.com. So welcome, Magenta. Wow, thank you, Pam. And what a lovely intro. <laughs> uh, really amazing to be doing a video with you. We've talked about it before, but, you know, timing and everything. So fabulous, fabulous to be connecting with you. And doing timing. fabulous, yeah. Divine thank timing. You. So and broadly, we, we hope to cover three areas in this, in this conversation that we're going to have. Um, first is um, the comet, which has recently passed by very, very close to Earth. And I know Magenta has a lot of interesting things to say about that, because I believe you had a channeling from the nine on that. Secondly, and this is going to be very interesting for me as well, we bumped into each other recently at an event and uh, it was a water presentation, actually, wasn't it, Magenta? And you said that you had um, recently had a channeling from the nine about about water. And that is very relevant to what's happening astrologically right now, which I can touch on as we move through. And if there's time, we'll also talk briefly about the upcoming March equinox, which is going to be so powerful. So Magenta, do you want to talk firstly about um, the comet that passed by so close recently and, and what it re really means for us, particularly in layman's terms, because I know the nine can speak in very metaphorical language. Yes, they absolutely do speak in metaphorical language. And when I bring a transmission forward, in fact, they were referring to the comet as the green phoenix, the green fire phoenix. And the reason why they do this is because there are activations within the, the imagery that they use and the metaphors that they use, which are in alignment with the actual physical event or, or thing or structure. So regarding the comet, they said to me that, that this was coming at a specific time and they actually used the word, and I didn't put this in the channeling because I thought this sounded a bit dark they use the word har is it harbinger or harbinger harbinger they don't really use that word and i thought oh gosh that's that's a bit i i, I just remember the word harbinger of doom in like fiction or something so I, I i left that word out i spoke to them privately what do you mean by a harbinger are you are you saying this comet's a harbinger of doom and then they clarified harbinger simply means that something is coming but it doesn't mean it's necessarily positive or negative, just that it's a sign that something is coming, as in something that's been waited for or something that's been prophesied. So I said, is it negative or positive? And as usual, they reply both, depending on perspective of as to who you are. So it's a harbinger, as in a um, a, a sign but a um, a sign, there are, there are signs all the time. We get signs all the time with synchronicity. But when it's something in the skies, natural, as in a comet, then it's a, a sign for all, a sign for humanity and outside of our time space, a sign for um, alternative Earths and timelines and other dimensions. Um, so they said it's also um, bringing a message, a message that can activate DNA. So when you see the comet, the message that you receive is going to be 
similar to the next person, but not necessarily the same. Because we are going through this whole process um, together at the same time, but our experience of this process is not going to be identical to the next person. So the signs are unique to us as well as global. But what they did actually write within the transmission, and this is how metaphoric they are, and it wasn't a huge channeling. The channeling was very much about um, um, in bulk, and then the comet was coming around the, the time of in bulk candle mass. So they, uh, over here in our hemisphere. So then they started to speak about this uh, fire phoenix, which I realized was metaphor for the comet. Uh, phoenix being important as well, because the phoenix is also a sign of rebirth, as in the phoenix is rising from the ashes. So we've got the same thing going on. What they actually said was pink raindrops fall from the sky in the wake of the green alabaster fire phoenix who moves through his flyby past Terra Earth. So there's a lot in that one sentence. But what I specifically said was, what did you mean when you said pink raindrops fall from the sky in the wake of the green alabaster fire phoenix, which is the comet? They replied, much is coded as catalyst for activations. So as I've said, they use these metaphors. They are catalysts and they are personal to each and every individual. Although they're the catalyst for the same thing, the same process as in DNA activation, moving into this crystalline structure, the way we experience the catalyst is unique to us. And then they said, this is the Kundalini of Earth and of the awakened human triggered wow. by the messenger that is the comet as harbinger which is what they said to me privately as i said that's not in the channeling so the kundalini of earth this is the raising of the um the energy of kundalini which is dna activation moving into the light body awakening activating the pineal gland into true sight but kundalini of earth as in the ley lines of earth um, all of the dragon lines of Earth clearing and waking up and within the human as we're doing this in conjunction with the Earth, as I'm sure you fully are aware of, of course, triggered by the messenger. So it's not that the comet itself is triggering this. It's that the pink raindrops falling from the sky is metaphor for the Kundalini of Earth and the reason they say this is when the Kundalini rises within the body, so using the metaphor of, of this being like an energy that snakes up th through in a spiral formation, three triple spirals up through the spine and over the head to the third eye. When this happens on a physical level, there is like um, a substance, like, a, like an oil, one could say, that is that comes down into the pineal gland into the body um this is triggering uh like a dmt kind of thing mm -hmm. so we have visionary experiences and that's what they mean by pink pink raindrops but what they also say is every metaphor is a convergence meaning it doesn't mean just one thing and i i'm i'm not that educated in astrology but the nine tell me, and you can clarify this, and I'm so glad I can talk to you. Um, it's uh, They tell me it's the same with astrology. So when you're looking at an astrological reading, one particular planet in a certain place, um, perhaps uh, connected to a certain house, can mean multiple different things depending on yes. the perspective, the person, the situation. So it's the same yes. with... That's what they've told me. And it's the same with the um, metaphors. So pink raindrops don't just mean one thing. So it's Kundalini, but also there's things going on in space and getting to the subject of water and rain. Why it's pink in space, I'm not sure. But there are multiple things that are, that, that, that are um, a meaning, a physical interpretation and they don't tell me everything. Even when I ask them to clarify, they will clarify the question I've asked. If I want to know more, I need to ask another question because they stand in a place of um, uh, 
they want to preserve my free will. They won't overstep my free will. So everything that they they talk to me about is either something I've questioned within, thought about, or someone's asked me the question. The question has to be asked somehow in order for them to bring forward the response. So this is, is it, why it's I, heart energy, Magenta. Well, pink. That, the higher heart is pink. So you've got, and of course, this fire phoenix is green. And alabaster, which I've never heard of, and I looked that up, is actually a gr green crystal or can come in green. So you've got the green of the heart and the pink being the higher heart. So absolutely. I mean, there are so many ways to um, look at all these different mes metaphors that they use when they bring forward a transmission. And sometimes the you can just take one sentence of a huge transmission that's like, a you know, several pages long or even a book. You can take one sentence and work with that one sentence, that one metaphor within yourself for days and days. Because what they say is the metaphor itself is fractal, just yeah. like source, frequency and reality itself. So from yeah. one word, such as, let's say, pink raindrops fall from the sky, that in itself, that one sentence is fractal, meaning if you wrote that down in a poem or in prose or in a book or as a transmission, however you use that, you can then open that up into multiple new transmissions because you go into it like a fractal and open it up and then there's the whole is inside what comes out of it in this holographic way. So that's yeah. why the transmissions are like they are. I hope that's helped to explain the heavy metaphor that they use. Yeah, it's so interesting. And I have I, I mentioned this in another video, um, Magenta, but it's so interesting because exactly around the time the comet was at its closest, around about February the 2nd, I had um, just a, a short section of a dream. It was literally only about 10 seconds long because then the alarm went off. But I, in, in this short section, I'd walked into a room which was empty. It was filled with white, sparkly, I wanted to say angelic light. The walls were a soft peach color. Nothing else in the room apart from a mirror. And when I walked over to the mirror, I was just full of light, just full of light. And my eyes were just light. I looked translucent. And normally they're really red with all the screen time. And I, I just looked absolutely translucent. And I thought, we are becoming light bodies. And then I started to levitate. And then the alarm went off, which was really annoying. So yeah, it's interesting annoying. because you mentioned light body in your um, translation of what they were saying. Yes, and mirrors they talk about a lot as well. So obviously going into this room, you have this photonic light, this plasma, which is within us, without, in space, in the ether. And then looking into the mirror, you're seeing the true self, you as light. But it's, you know, in a room... Um, a building, a structure, that's the 3D. So you are becoming this in 3D, meaning you don't have to leave your body and go through the death process in order to okay. find that light. You, or us, <laughs> as in all of us, we're doing it while we're still in the body. We're, that's that's ascension. We are, we are going through what we would normally do in earlier cycles of this period. We would normally go through the death process, go through reincarnation, and move through all of this awakening to that light and the learning that goes with it, that would all happen between lives. And then we would incarnate again, if you're looking at it in a linear sense. Ascension is you don't need to go through that process. You do it in the body. So you take the body yeah. with you. That's what is meant by that. So that dream is perfect. And I, I would have thought with you connecting with the planets and astrological alignments, they are huge, huge catalysts. So working with them, you're going to be triggered all the time because and yeah. you're not just working with them as a student. You're actually working with them as a teacher. So you're going to be triggered all the time because you're, you've become one with astrology, even though, oh, it's a, you know, it's a teaching, it's a science, it's a structure. But what it represents has become one with you for this lifetime. You've, oh, you've bless you. It. Yeah, it feels like a sacred language, you know, it and is, I feel yeah. just 
so lucky to have stumbled on it all those years ago. But what you were saying also about the the Earth's energy lines being so activated. I mean, this is what Rory Duff talks about a lot at the moment, that all the sacred sites are on fire. You know, they're, they're waking up. The dragon lines are waking yes. up, getting wider and stronger. He talked about that in a, in a recent interview. So it's so exciting. And if you look at Kundalini energy, I think of that very much as, as, as Uranus. And Uranus is currently what's called on the world axis in a, in a position um, in the zodiac which throws its energy onto the, the world view the public stage if you like and in one sense that's been very tragic because it's the um the planet of earthquakes and we know what's happened in turkey and syria but in a much in a much deeper uh more beautiful sense it is awakening the kundalini of of us and the earth so what you were saying from the channeling is absolutely aligning with the astrology which is which is just fabulous. So, so it feels very propitious. It feels very um, fortunate in the way you've explained it, Magenta. That yes. comet energy, bring in new energy for us. One hundred percent. That's what that comet is showing. That you know, this this is that's why they said phoenix. This is the green phoenix. If you are to give the comet, because a comet is a structure but has consciousness. How would we see the, the representation? You've got the dragon lines within the earth. This is the true dragon awakening within us. We are the dragon riders for the dragon. The phoenix is the comet. This is how the nine speak all the time, bringing forward. Um, and these are ancient knowings within us. And when we awaken, we know the phoenix, we know the dragon we know the mermaid, you know, the, the amount of people who are awakened that are, when they hear these terms, dragon, so many people are like, that's me. That is me. I, I am called by the dragon. I am the dragon. I'm at one with the dragon. I'm a dragon rider. I'm a dragon tamer. And the same with the mermaid. That's me. I swim under the water with the flowers. I mean, that, that film Avatar, The Way of Water, the sequel, the amount of people awakened individuals and even those who haven't fully awakened that are being triggered by the imagery within this is all memory of who we are on multiple levels as in a real civilization that we lived in in previous incarnations memory that we're accessing within the earth because the earth has the memory of the civilization but also layered within metaphor as well because we are looking at this metaphor going right up to source so you can look at a physical 3d interpretation a 4d interpretation and a 5d interpretation and beyond with every metaphor so um i i feel that there's a lot of similarities with these metaphors that the nine bring forward and the astrology that you work with as well. Because if you look at astrology, each one has a sign, each one has a symbol, and then you've got all the fractal um, metaphors coming from the symbol as well as the actual movements of the planet. So it's it's um, a, a multi-dimensional science, a multi-dimensional structure. And the, the information from the nine is very much the same thing, but just using the focus of language and um, image rather than planetary alignments, but it's it's very similar. Yeah, it's, it's wonderful to hear because I'm getting so many kind of resonances as you speak, Magenta, and, and the phoenix very much. I think of the phoenix rising from the ashes, and that's very uh, actually linked to Pluto, you know, the death of the old and, and new life forming. And really, that's absolutely, you know, layers and layers and layers. And again, it's it's like the fractality of the universe. We are getting so many messages that this is the death of the old, the death of the old yes. world, the old system, and the beginning of the new at a much higher level, new life at a much higher level. Yes. So I'd love to talk about your channeling because I haven't heard it yet. We didn't have time to talk about it at the event where we bumped into each other about the information you got about water because we are moving into a big phase of water astrologically. Yes. And I'd look, love to hear about that. You, you would think to discuss water, there wouldn't be much to say because like water's water, but goodness me, it is again so fractal. I will just say before we leave the uh, comet conversation, the phoenix rising from the ashes as a harbinger of that new birth, the fact that the comet has flown by, the comet has shown itself, means the phoenix is here. The phoenix has risen. 
So it's not, oh, wow. it's not just that it's going to rise, it's risen already. So wow. it's there. And that is that is the rising of new earth. New earth is here now. Even though some people I know can't see that and say, well, where is it, Magenta? I've had no evidence of new earth. It's about relaxing and knowing and trusting and you will find it. Just you and me connecting today is a new earth yep. connection. And that's yeah. You know, so, yeah, 100%. Yeah. That's so interesting because it's kind of the setup, I feel, for the March equinox, which you'll come on to. It absolutely is, yes. This whole January, late January, February, and then into the spring equinox has had like these little mini cycles running up to the spring equinox. Um, mm -hmm. And obviously the um, autumn equinox in the other hemisphere. The March equinox being this birth point but late January through February in this sine wave, there's been a lot of um, intense energetic cycles coming up to that point, which is why we are seeing the signs of the old order collapsing. But it can look like they're getting stronger. It can look like they're holding more power because yeah. they are showing themselves. They're saying this is what we have. This is all the power that we have. Look how powerful we are. They're doing that because they're losing it. If they truly yeah. had the power, they wouldn't need to show it to us. So anyway, that's going off track somewhat. So Yeah, that's right, because because I feel magenta the better that we prepare for this March equinox, the the better it will work for us as individuals. That's my feeling. It's a really important time of preparation of clearing clearing away the old and stepping fully into this new energy. Yeah. So I'm I'm laughing here and getting distracted. I ask um, my husband to bring up um, a tea for me, a peppermint and licorice tea. And he's bought it up in this cup. Look. <laughs> and I'm, I'm stood there like this with my hand and I'm thinking, I'm going to look so silly covering the cup. So anyway, I, no, I was just say to him, why did you bring that cup up? I'm so sorry. I don't know. Maybe no. there's some colour energy with the fox. But uh... <laughs> it's interesting. It's interesting what you were saying about the old system uh, appearing to be more visible. Because in the last video I did, I said it's like um, that you're at the theatre and all the scenery is starting to come come away in the corners. It's tatty, it's shabby, it's old, it's, it's starting to unravel. So the actors are talking louder and louder so the audience won't notice how unraveling all of the scenery is, is becoming. And I think that's quite a good way to look at it, you know, what getting louder. What a great louder. metaphor, yes. What a but great horror. metaphor. And if you think of The Wizard of Oz and The Wizard Behind yes. the Curtain, it's the same thing. It, they're showing exactly themselves that. because... But it's difficult for those who are not necessarily thinking in what I would class fifth dimensional terms, which is multidimensionality, and looking at the fractality of these metaphors. For individuals who are still awake and aware but are thinking third dimensionally, that's difficult because they're seeing that their, their brain is processing everything in a linear sense. So they will they can then look and think they're getting more powerful. They're getting stronger. They're doing this. They're doing that. They're planning on this. They're planning on that. How can we possibly move forward with this? And the only way to really, truly see it so that you find the joy and the knowing that from the higher perspective, all this is done al already. One must do everything you can to look multidimensionally, look in this fractal way, think in this spiral thought rather than linear thought. That's the main teaching at this point for people, because once you think that way, you will see so much. And it, what you said, you're, if you're looking at the theater as a metaphor, you're going to be seeing what's behind the scenes. You're not yeah, just yeah. seeing the play. That's another way of looking at it. But regarding water, there was a lot that came through. First of all, there was something very, very small just touched upon in my latest book, which was just released last month that you mentioned in the intro, The Diamond Codex and the Quartz Key. Um, very, very uh, minor touching on water. And what they actually said, and in the context of a larger chapter was, your food, farming and agriculture shall biodynamically and organically present bringing new ocean nourishment into the fields and soil soils of new earth. So this is just one way of looking at water. There's lots that have come through. Um, so 
that was just part of the overall transmission and I didn't go any deeper into that. But obviously, knowing I was going to talk to you, I remembered that there was something they mentioned about um, ocean nourishment. So I've, I've asked them to clarify. Can you explain what you mean by new ocean nourishment? And they replied, we mean by this the vast vitamin and mineral and salt rich unpolluted and regenerated ocean waters that shall feed the fields and soils of new earth. So I replied, regenerated, do you mean there will be people who discover a way to clean seawater and use it to feed the soil for farming? And they said, indeed, and use it for yet more. Many discoveries shall be made. So wow. it seems to me that there's something within ocean water. And if you look at the pollution that's occurred over many, many years, what the nine have shown me is that there is a certain beyond the, 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 the salts, uh, the, the, the sea life, the water itself, there is a charge. There is an electrical kind of charge Absolutely. Yep. In, the, in the water and it can be used for multiple things. Now, I have talked to them a little bit more about this when I looked at some of the things they were saying in, in the recent transmission about the return of the mermaid. It seems to me that ultimately, with all these different um, information about water, it seems to me that they are leaning towards a free energy movement. And I know that you and I met together at the local event. And the reason why I went to that event was because I'd had the information come through about water. When I saw that this person was doing a talk on water and free energy, I thought I've got to go to this because this is what I'm being shown. And I don't get told everything. I have to go out and live the adventure and discover things for myself. Then I don't tell me everything. It's often in, in the form of these clues. And then that's when I met you. So um, I've gone through some of the information um, that they've talked about. So that's the new ocean nourishment. Um, so one of the things they did say is um, a new inception point created from Aurora network seed points, I'll explain that, with oceanic understanding as you enter the time period that heralds the return of the mermaid. So a new inception point is not just a birth point, but a conception point, as in the, the very first seed. And then you have the, um, the, 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 the moment of that being, um, incubated before it's birthed so that's what we're entering a new a completely new inception point created from aurora network seed points well the aurora network is the name that they give to all awakened individuals especially if they're in the fifth dimensional way of thinking so star seeds basically and that again is difficult for people because they'll say, well, what's a star seed? And am I am I one? If you are awake and aware of the fact that there is something in this world that is not what's being presented, and that is multidimensional and is spiritual as well as physical, then you are part of the Aurora network. That's you. And anyone who who wakes up joins it. And the, the reason why they use Aurora. Um, is it, it is connected to the aurora ab borealis. It's, that's the, the presentation of light, plasma, photonic light, but also the group soul that is created by all the awakened and aware individuals they refer to in the feminine as the divine princess aurora. So they use these um, presentations simply because the group soul is an individual intelligent structure in and of itself. As in an ascended master, if you will, and there are multiple, multiple of them. And the more people that wake up, the more of these group souls and presentations, and go goddess and god um, presentations are created. So Aurora Network seed points would be the thoughts of the Aurora Network, but not random thoughts. But when the lots of awakened people have the same thought that's focused this creates reality. This creates yes. reality. So that's what yes. they mean. That's what they mean, that the inception point we're moving into, a new inception point, which is this equinox point, is created from these focused thoughts of awakened individuals 
with oceanic understanding as you enter the time period that heralds the return of the mermaid, as in metaphor. They went on to say, from all things moo of the waters, children of Neptune and the travellers of the great grand cosmic Merkaba through aurora portals, called to your planet as open doorways for the birth of multiple new sub-sub-logos group soul archetypes, Alyssa, Soraya, and Seraphim, angelic myrrh that traverse the waters of space and hold space within your waters. I know that that's really full on metaphor and it really needs breaking down, but Alyssa sounds very similar to a um, a structure that you mentioned. So, Alassia, yeah, which I'll talk about in a, in a moment. Because you see, these these sub sub logos could be planetary structures or stars yes. because everything is within the galaxy as I said I have to work these things out myself but I did ask them can you talk more about oceanic understanding because we're talking about water I wasn't going to break down everything here what's oceanic understanding within the seed points of these aware individuals they're suggesting here that all star seeds have oceanic understanding in them so they said this is, as we have said, more awareness of ocean waters and its practical and spiritual significance. Yet beyond the ocean waters upon your land, we speak of the ocean waters within the realm you call space. So they're wow. talking about spiritual and practical significance. So water in space and within the land. So we're looking at metaphor here. We're looking at some kind of fluid energy, which could be plasma. They tell me that plasma takes on multiple different forms. Yes, we, it does. Yeah. So there's a solid form of plasma and a watery form of plasma. And it is the structure we are made of. So that when we first came into incarnation, we would have come through this sort of... Um, uh, non-physical structure and become more and more physical through plasma and, and water. And we would have birthed ourselves within the waters before we came out onto the land, as in our original inception as humans or whichever planet we are on. <laughs> So, I mean, this is so fascinating, Magenta. It's so much is, you know, binging into my mind right now because firstly, and I might have mentioned this to you at the event, there's something called primary water, primary water, which people can just do an internet search on. And apparently this is incredibly pure, mineral rich. Um, there's five times as much planet um, pri primary water under what's called the mantle of the earth. And I'm not quite sure what the mantle of the earth is than in, the, than in all of the oceans in the world. So it's incredibly pure. And I believe it comes up in kind of geysers and springs and that kind of thing. But this is incredible for healing and nourishment, et cetera. The, the, the other thing that's kind of pinging into my mind is, um, as you're speaking, there's a dwarf planet um, recently discovered. And by recently, they were, the, the ones that have been discovered were about 20 years ago, turn of the century, called Selassia. And she is mermaid energy. Um, she's the wife of Neptune, but she is goddess of salt water salt water the sea is so important it's the something about the salts because it can take salts. an electrical yes it can take an electrical charge and there's one whole theory of evolution that we began in earliest life forms on the um the edge of the tide because as the salt water comes in up up and down the beach there's some kind of an electrical charge that can happen with the movement of the tides because it's salt water it can take a charge that started very early forms of life from which we um then developed now whether yes. that's true or yes. not I don't, but there's something yes. very important about the salt that's yeah. Lemuria. That's Lemuria. And that's the, the, the world of the mermaid. Lemuria going through multiple different stages because the early Lemuria was non-physical and etheric and would have come down in this more um, uh, more like air. And it's hard to explain air and then more like water and then, and then into this more um, more solid plasma. So that's that's absolutely how we came into physical birthing. Because we came down frequencies, yeah, and, and the 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 body, the physical body that you have, matches the frequency 
of the environment you live in. But it has to yeah. be birthed and, and salt holds the charge needed to birth a structure from antimatter into matter because salt and it must be pure salt. And I say that because m uh, much of the waters have been deliberately. Yeah, yeah. That charge has been taken deliberately through chemicals and and through, well, multiple means without going into all of them. Um, and I don't know all of them, but th that charge has been taken. But I didn't know about primary water. And that that makes a lot of sense because they're repeatedly talking about unpolluted, pure waters. Uh, I went on to ask them about the space water. Do you mean that there is water in space? And I'm talking physically, is there actual water in space? And is this water accessible to humanity? How is it accessible if it's in space? And they replied, indeed, we do mean there is water in your space. It will be accessible to some of humanity, not all of humanity. This occurs within the bifurcation. So there will be those in the inverted system and those within New Earth who access these waters, these space waters we speak of. So what I'm thinking they're saying is those that have some kind of technology in some way are able to access this space water on both sides of the bifurcation, which is why it can be used for a negative thing and a positive thing. Absolutely. And and uh, just for it, this is what's so interesting at the moment astrologically, because Salassia has a 272 year orbit. It's very, very slow. Right now it is conjunct Jupiter. Jupiter expands everything it touches. And Jupiter is the planet of wisdom and higher consciousness. And Salassia in its symbolism, in its archetype, is linked to the shimmering sunlight and moonlight on the salt water. But it also, I believe, is very linked to photonic light, you know, this shimmering, brilliant white light we can see around, and orbs and that kind of thing. So because Jupiter is expanding it at the moment, that really says to me we are getting bigger and bigger waves of this photonic light coming in. It's building and building and building, particularly as we move towards the March equinox as one particular junction, as it were, and, and, and jumping off point to another level. So yeah. that, you know, that, that's absolutely fascinating. So in all this incredible light, I mean, when we were together at the um, at the winter solstice. I mean, it was 70 degrees, wasn't it, at that mass yes. meditation outside. The light was absolutely incredible. And it's this, this white plasma photonic light, which is part of our upgrade that's happening. And that's yes. why this feels so incredibly important, right? It's taking us to more wisdom. It's taking us to higher consciousness. Yes, and comes in waves, just as you said. And then you have waves another presentation of ocean. So you've got metaphor in there as well. They also showed this to me as like moving in a spiral, um, going closer and closer to the core. They've been saying this to me for quite a few years prior to 2012. And it seems that we we go through the, the, these sort of rings um, within this spiral. And as we go into the core, this, the rings get smaller and smaller, meaning everything comes uh, grander and more expanded and faster as we move into this what they call the singularity which is the destined event for this planet that cannot be stopped how it presents is open to multiple different um, permeations but it has to present and that's the great awakening and and more within it so so yes absolutely so I I went on to um discuss with them to ask them is this space water in the form of ice because i was thinking well if there was water in space wouldn't it just fall down on us <laughs> i don't really know how the, sort of it works with gravity i have to ask them so many questions and i'm not um studied in science or physics and many a time they in in the channeling they will say um, our conduit does not have uh, the information, whether it's biological or, or whether it's chemistry or whatever, um, to bring forward that which we wish to express. Therefore, we use her limited understanding. I'm like, oh, thanks, you know. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah I mean, <laughs> just that's how they speak. Anyway, so um, I asked them, is this water in the form of ice? And this is what they replied. Yes, much ice and also that which is similar to your rainwater. 
yet so indeed is there much that holds a composition similar to your oceanic waters. So there's something similar to rain. I got the image of some kind of mist. Yeah, and it's structured water because rainwater and seawater are both structured because they're natural. Top wa tap water has no structure. It's all broken up because of the right angles and heaven knows what's in the water. But structured water is incredibly healing for us, incredibly good for us, because it, it, it it's a natural form. It's a natural molecule, if you like. And the, the New Zealand lady, Veda Austin, who I've been talking about recently, she's got some stunning crystallography of crystals that she's taken from salt water or from natural spring water and how different the crystals are. They produce beautiful, they either produce fish if it's seawater in the crystals, shapes of fish or leaves or ferns if it's spring water. If it's tap water, it's just kind of dots and dashes like, like Morse code. So that I wonder if that's the similarity that it's structured, it's natural. Well, they do speak of this charge and then what they show me is like a crystalline structure that is alive. It has memory. It has memory of where it's been. It has memory of what it is. So this is the importance of water, but it must be, as you say, this structured water, this pure, unpolluted water, which they say that those in New Earth, there will be those in New Earth that have access to this, that will understand its significance practically and spiritually. Um, you know, this is this is a physical version of source intelligence, the memory of source. I mean, if we drink it, if we if we bathe in it, swim in it, if we are at one with it, we're taking in the memory within it. But in our day to day life, few of us have access to it because all the waters we're given has been changed in some way for we know we know the reason so it's it's nice to know that within new earth this will happen but there is another thing whenever the nine bring a transmission forward whilst they're showing me that this is going to happen it nearly always is the case because they won't tell me something that hasn't happened at all yet because any transmission i bring forward can fall into the hands of the others mm. therefore they won't bring anything forward through me unless it's safe to do so, meaning on some level it's already happened. So I yes. would assume there are individuals out there who are already doing this. And it seems to be connected um, to free energy, which the nine calls zero point energy, and they even call it something else. And I'll I'll get to that. I did ask them, why are the seed points for this created from the Aurora network? How, how are the Aurora network, the awakened individuals, creating these inception points for this oceanic understanding? And I think I've kind of covered it, but they said the askings, thoughts, quests, magic and pineal gland projections are in alignment at critical mass level enough to create the understandings of which we speak. So the pineal gland projections that light that you were talking about, that we are seeing more and more of, that um, it activates the pineal gland. That light is, is at one with the, the light within. So our own inner light within the pineal gland and the light that's coming in are in the same place. So um, we perceive it as being outside of us or inside, but outside and inside is the same place in the higher understanding because there's no such thing as linear time there's also no such thing as as um measurement within space in the higher understanding there's only one space and one and one time so that's the zero point so that's the light and what we do with the pineal gland it isn't just about seeing things within the multidimensional it it acts as a projector the light triggers and we are able to project thoughts and when those thoughts are co adhesive those yeah. thoughts take form within the plasma and, yeah, yeah. and so we're you know like we we're talking about coming in to sea water and how we were forming in the first place that's how life is formed and we are now becoming creators of life 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. And if it, I was talking to Professor Robert Temple about this when I interviewed him a few months ago. And if we are in very positive state of love, joy, gratitude, and, you know, that therefore our emotion is very coherent, we produce very symmetrical and coherent and beautiful geometry in the plasma. So it's like Masaru Emoto's work, if you like, in the plasma. And it bounces back to us as our reality as being very yes. positive and loving and, you know, to be grateful for. But if we're in anger, hate, fear, whatever, we get very distorted, ugly, asymmetrical geometry forming in the plasma, which bounces back to us as the same, hateful, fearful, blah, 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 blah. So, you know, it, 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 the universe is just a mirror, takes on a scientific form with that. We can see how it's, we are beginning to get an understanding of how it's happening in the plasma as a living consciousness, because Professor Robert Temple was saying it's not just kind of air and ether, it's a divine consciousness. It's a divine living consciousness with which you are interacting in, in every moment, 24-7, whether you realize it or not. But we are going to, as we step forwards, become masters of this and realize even the water that we are taking in and urinating out. That is, it's just, we're in just in the flow of living consciousness all the time. That's absolutely. 100% it. That's absolutely it. Yes. So I asked them what you mean, what do you mean by the return of the mermaid? Because that's a big thing. What what do you mean? And they reply, much is presented within one flame letter or metaphoric code, therefore the meaning is a convergence. What they mean by that is there are multiple meanings for return of the mermaid. Um, a flame letter as in um, a cosmic inner alphabet within the DNA that we are born with that's locked away, if you will, if we're unawakened. And when we awaken, we trigger this inner cosmic alphabet, which is our innate understanding of symbolism, which is why symbolism has mm -hmm. been inverted so that we don't remember, but mm -hmm. we can access actual symbolism because once we know actual symbolism, like your theater metaphor, the, the scenery falls away and you see what's behind everything. So that's what the awakened individuals can do. So that's what they mean by much is presented. Um, it's a convergence, meaning there's multiple meanings to Return of the Mermaid on all these different dimensional perspectives. So they can't give everything. So what they said was the main presentations we can give you without overstepping free will and denying epiphanies. Now, this is really important. What they've said to me before is free will isn't just about um, standing within boundaries. It's epiphanies are our realizations when we learn something. When we learn something new, a concept, and we, we marry up one concept with another and see the connections, inside we'll, we'll feel like, oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. That's what it is. And that creates a chemical reaction in the body, opens the heart, activates DNA, so there is actual a physiological reaction to an epiphany. If they wow. deny the epiphany by telling us everything, we'll just be, oh, okay, thanks. It's not the same as discovering it. We are explorers and we must go out and live the quest. You know, we must yeah. take the, the, the vision quest, um, the pilgrimage. We must do that. This the, Everything the nine give is a guidance and they'll come as close as they can to the point of free will where they don't overstep our, my ability to hold epiphany. So that's what they mean. We can give you without overstepping free will and denying epiphany. So when they say that, I know they're coming very close and they say, are the understanding of the waters at molecular level, the living within the waters, the Piscean and Aquarian frequencies and the activation of the fifth dimensional Merkaba. Now, I'm not sure what they mean by Piscean and Aquarian frequencies. And I think, you know, that's maybe you would know that more than me, but obviously Piscean fish, Aquarian underwater, waters at the molecular level. So going, I had to kind of research molecular to find out exactly what that means. And that's obviously going right in further than the atom to actually see what the structure is made of. And I think that's what we're saying, the plasma, the memory, but potentially there's more within a scientific um, concept there. The living within the waters, so that's the life. The activation of the fifth dimensional Merkaba. Now that's another meaning of mermaid. So you've got mermaid, mer, M-E-R, Merkaba, M-E-R. Mm. -E so when you're looking at the sound mer, 
It's ancient language, mermaid merkaba. It's the, the same sea. thing. We the are mer actually, in French. Yeah, the sea. Or, or mer, I mean, whether I'm pronouncing it right, but it's a it's a sound. It is an ancient of the ancient tongue. And that means the merkaba, the activation of the merkaba, but it's not just an individualized merkaba. We're creating our own individualized merkaba, which is the external geometry of the plasma and the photonic light and the activation of the DNA. But as we do that cohesively, when we structure that Merkaba cohesively with the next person and the next person, we create what they're calling the grand cosmic Merkaba, which is the Merkaba created by aware humanity simultaneously. Fabulous. So, and that's so powerful that no inversion can can stand against it. No technology, no matter how advanced. This is another thing going slightly off topic. I have asked the nine before to tell me, to show me what technology the other, um, you know, the other polarity, let's say, have. And they said to me that I'm not ready to know all of it because if there were certain things, if they were to show me certain things that they have, I would then believe that we stood no chance because I would think, how could we possibly, possibly stand a chance against that? And they said to me, that would be a false assumption. So they want to make sure that I'm ready to not have that false assumption. Even though I say, I'm ready, I'm ready, just show me. I, I promise I won't have the false assumption. They, <laughs> <laughs> know, <laughs> yeah, they clearly know within me that perhaps there is something that would, and we all have natural preservation and fear and if we're seeing Goliath and we're only David yeah we might think well I'm only little David how am I going to deal with Goliath and they're, they're saying to me when you move as one all of you in cohesive movement creating the grand cosmic Merkaba this creates planets realities geometries the pineal gland working it's not just about creating our own individual reality you create a planetary and a galactic reality there is no technology, no matter what they do, there is no technology that's any match for that. What they can do is create a little sort of timeline or structure within the overall, which is the bifurcation. So you have New Earth over here and you have their bit over there. And that can hold some um, some sus sustenance, sustaining for a while. Mm -hmm. But once this New Earth structure rises to this return of the mermaid, return of the fifth dimensional Merkaba, the unification and moving beyond 5D into higher dimensional structure into that singularity, that cannot hold, that darker structure cannot hold. Goliath cannot stand against David when that occurs. So that's what they are showing me by return of the mermaid. And that's, I mean, it's absolutely fabulous, Magenta. And, and and that's why, you know, you and I constantly say, do not go into fear because you're quantum entangling with absolutely what you don't want. You stay in love, you're on the highest timeline. You're adding momentum, energy, focus, attention to the best possible timeline and bringing other people with you. It's gathering momentum and like an energetic hologram, like a wave in every moment, the more of us do that. And, and we get there faster. We get to New Earth faster. So it's so wonderful to hear that that's coming through from the nine as well. And just a, a little bit about the astrology, Pisces, um, Saturn is moving into Pisces on the 8th of March for the next three years. And Pisces is about the oceans. It's ruled by Neptune, Lord of the Sea. That's the whole symbolism. So yeah. we are going to be focused on Saturn in Pisces for three years, a huge amount to do with the seas, the oceans, the depth of the oceans, um, and, and really a kind of a mastery of all that the oceans have to give us, because I think there is so much more to the oceans, both energetically in terms of healing but also spiritually that we have yet to discover and that's really what the channeling has been saying i think we're just yes. we've got l plates on with oceans right now that's, that's so, pretty much, so much yeah. that's pretty much it we have l plates on and we're learning and it's the ocean within and and <clears throat> regarding fear going into fear i completely agree with everything you say but there is a, a, another side to that and sometimes when people hear that don't go into fear they then go into fear because they've been in fear and they're worried about being in fear and they don't know how to stop going into fear. So they're frightened of going into fear. For those individuals, I would say it's okay 
when we say don't go into fear, it doesn't mean you can't feel fear a little bit for some things or for you to see what's going on and feel fear. That's that's normal. The issue here is not to stay in fear. It's Bring yourself look, back. Exactly. Look at the fear and think, OK, why is it here? Let's work out why it's here and let's move through integration of that fear. So that's yeah. that's and just an add on, because I know a lot of people say that to me. You say not to be in fear, Magenta, but I am in fear. So am I failing? Am I not going to ascend? And then I have to say, no, no, no. It's normal to yeah. have fear. It's okay yeah. to have fear, but it's it's integrating it, understanding that it's a message working through it. So just adding that in there. But you're you're absolutely right. We are there's so much to learn. And and the nine say the water's within, you know, water being mm -hmm. the fluid conductor of all. Once the yeah. charge is brought back in the seas and in as you say, um, structured water, pure water, and within us, that's that's the the, the physical um, matter version of the antimatter life, and it's everywhere. So and it's, I believe it's not, it's not just yeah. water. It, it's almost as though water is the wrong word for it. It's almost as though this is source in a fluid form. Yeah, it's <laughs> like, it's, I don't know what it's else living. To call it. It's liquid living consciousness. And there's something about the electrical charge within ourselves. I believe that the stronger the electrical charge you have, the healthier you are, yes, I believe. That's actually and, true. Mm. And I'm just sort of aware of time. We're sort of coming up to about an hour. Do you feel you'd like to move on to just talking about the, the equinox now, Magenta? Yeah. How do you feel? Do you have more to say about the water before we do that? I'm just aware of your, your time and oh, energy. I mean, well. I did obviously uh, ask them quite a lot, but <laughs> I, I didn't think we'd get through all of it. Um, only that they've mentioned Neptune. You, you've mentioned Neptune a couple of times. They've mentioned Neptune again. They mentioned the children of Neptune, which is another flame letter metaphor. And the children of Neptune are predominantly the children born of the sign of Pisces and Aquarius. But they added within the 13 house astrological map. So we are talking about, and I've, I think I've spoken to you before, of almost as though the 12th house, and then there's another point to it, whether it's a- I think it's in the middle. I think it's in the middle too, because they say, I asked them uh, about the 13th sign, and they said it it is, I said, is it a, is it a pronounced a fucus? I said, is it a fucus? And they said- Ophicus. A, a Ophicus, is that it? Okay. They said, Ophicus indeed, yet so, yet so too. Wormwood, Planet X, Nibiru, the Red Destroyer, and many more names known by, as is the convergence that is the 13th sign, the true 13th sign, meaning it could be any of these planets. Yes, that fits, that fits. But the true 13th sign is that of the 13th crystal skull and the 13th tribe of Israel. Well, I already know through my talks with them that the 13th crystal skull is us in ascended form within that crystalline structure the 13th tribe of israel is the central point of an infinity structure so yes it's in the middle ah, okay how fascinating it's, in the, it's the core because it yeah, isn't absolutely. a sign it's it's the actual core of the structure which it's like the, the zero point, point the center of the to, uh, the, the toroidal wheel that's it. Oh, that is so because I didn't know that. That is so fascinating. That that's it. And um, yeah. So anyway, let me just go to what they they didn't bring through very much yet about um, the equinox. What did they say? Uh, you are on the precipice. Or I actually, I actually asked them about this and brought this forward as a post on my social media. We are on the precipice of another turning point. We entered a new world on the 21st of March, 2020. They told me on the 21st of March, 2020, this is day one. I'm like, wow, this is day one of a new world. Well, we know what happened with the world around that time. Three year cycle into the 21st of March, 2023, we enter into yet another new world. So it's like the, the, the new world from 2020 is still going, but a new one's been born within that one. So we're, we've got a new cycle starting within that cycle. It's almost as though in the past, we've gone through all these multiple cycles and we're coming to the, the uh, culmination point, going, if you will, that way. 
And it's now we're coming out this way. We're making cycles of awareness out the other side, creating this cone using geometry to explain what we are doing as a, as a humanity in our awareness and as a planet. So we stand within the very last moments of this three year cycle that's just before the equinox and peel off yet another layer of the old world. Setting a bifurcated trajectory, so that's forward, into two distinct realities that will coexist for the next phase. So in the next phase, and I mean, the last one was three years. Is the next one th another three years? I don't know. Is it three months? I don't, I'm not given time until after the time, usually. But we're in the next phase. So they'll coexist. One augmented techno-cyber reality digitalized world and one Robin Hood society, which is the outlaws, the living in nature. I'm not saying that that's literal. Some It might be for some. It doesn't. People automatically think, oh, we've got to go and live in the woods, you know, like Robin Hood. Doesn't quite mean that, but it could because we are looking at a metaphor, a flame letter. Robin Hood is a flame letter. And that can mean multiple things. Day one of this new double trajectory is March 20th into the 21st, 2023. So it's a new day one of another phase or another world. That's really, I mean, we've been bifurcated for a long time, but now we are entering this augmented techno cyber reality digitalized world and a Robin Hood society, which are those that are the mirror image to the digitalized world, as in we, that it's not a case of rejecting the digitalized world. If you reject the digitalized world in resistance, you'll end up in it. It's standing as an antidote to it in full acceptance. That's how we get there. Um, now, what else did they say? Three year cycle into 21st of March. Um, oh, that's it. They say here, it's an aspect of the overall ascension cycle. So the, the, the cycle that we were in is an aspect of the overall ascension cycle, not as an ending, as in the grand cycle, but a new inception point within it, because the ending of the grand cycle is this singularity. So what they also have told me is it coincides with the Mayan calendar. The end of the Mayan calendar, I believe, was when the long count ended in 2012. That's there it. Will, yeah, there will be a new count. It doesn't necessarily mean it will be a Mayan count, but it will be connected to their their type of counting. And that's not, we're not there yet. We are in this point in between the ending of, and it's just one way of counting time. But according to the nine, it's the most accurate time counting that we've had on this planet thus far in this particular time period or epoch since Atlantis. We're now at the end of one counting system and prior to the beginning of another. And that's the point of creation, because if you look at zero point as that central point, you extend it out. And so you're in it all the time. You're, you know, the minute you go into fifth dimensional thinking, you're in zero point immediately. You don't have to think where is zero point. It's there within you the whole time. And this equinox is a central point, a new birthing of this bifurcation. Now, eventually, going further in time, there will be a trifurcation. There will be a third timeline. And the trifurcation can manifest in many ways, just like the bifurcation. And there's more to learn about that. But at the moment, we're going into a very obvious bifurcation between these two worlds. And that is what March Equinox is about. So for us in New Earth, New Earth will be far more evident and significant mm. and formed because you actually have these um, multiple groups and structures individuals people all having epiphanies all having ideas that have been setting up new earth for the last three years and longer and now what they've been setting up starts to show so whether it's a shop or a business or a cafe or whether it's um, a group that's raising money for health or raising money for um libraries knowledge spirituality whatever it is and it's, it's across the world, this new earth. It's not in one place. And it exists within the larger structure, as I, I know I've spoken to you before. Um, the one other thing I did say is regarding King, King Neptune, 
why is is it an important symbol at this time and and if so why and that's when we get to the trifurcation so it's it's like the comet as the fire phoenix is the harbinger of this new world which we're entering into this bifurcation we're entering into new earth if we're on the joy side with king neptune or poseidon also could be seen as king neptune indeed yes for water significance emotions and the alchemy process that awakened descending humanity moves through but so too for the trident held as the trinity for when you have three you have all this presents the trifurcation that alchemizes into the unity of new earth because a tri a three a trine will always move into unity because if you're looking at masculine feminine and they have the the birthing so when you have one and two there's nothing that's been created from the two. At the moment, there's a bifurcation, technological age, new earth, but nothing's being created. The third is the creation. Once there's three, once there's a trifurcation, you have to have unity because that's then that merges the two into three. One plus one equals three, not one plus one equals two. They keep telling me this. So once we're in the trifurcation, and I guess they'll tell me when we're in it, that's when we're also in unity and that's when the singularity is, is basically set. I mean, it's set now, but it's it's absolutely set once we're in that. And there's evidence of a bifurcation now, little seed points. So the trident that King Neptune holds is a symbol for the trifurcation, which is a symbol for oh. unity. I mean, that's just amazing because, yes, in myth, yes, he absolutely has a trident and he's in Pisces now, the sign of rulership. And Pisces, um, more than any other sign, is about connection to source, connection to oneness, everyone being together in oneness, unconditional love, healing. And Neptune stays in Pisces until 2026. So these are an inc incredibly important three years. Well, it is three oh. years then. It is three because I was wondering if it was three years. So yeah, it's been yeah. three years now. Is it another three? I mean, it makes sense. Three and three and three. Uh, and then ne Neptune sense. will move out of Pisces. And that's the very, he, you know, he will move through the very last degree of Pisces and into the first degree of Aries, which is, you know, the, the whole new beginning. Because the first degree of Aries, which is what the sun moves into on the 21st of March, is considered the astrological new year. It's the very first degree of the zodiac, zero of Aries. It's like, I always want to call it the creator degree. And right now, astrologically, we have a dwarf planet there called Manwe, Manwe, M-A-N-W-E. Tolkien writes about Manwe in his book Cimmerillion, but it has a 283-year orbit, and it is exactly, it is right at um, zero degrees of Aries. And in myth, Manwe and his wife Varda created the cosmos, they created the stars, They the he is the highest source of divine intelligence, he's closest to the mind of God. So he created the original cosmos, so he's now coming round again to the creator degree at, and you know he's there right now and will stay there into the March equinox and if he knew how to do it the first time he can do it the second he's at that creator degree when the sun moves on to zero degrees of Aries as well I mean it's just uh, you know it's just layers and layers and yes. layers of symbolism yes. that it is saying end of the old beginning of the new end of the old beginning of the new so this is you know this is so exciting and and you know this has been so reaffirming and validating for the astrology but it's it's also been really exciting to hear what they have to say because it adds kind of layers of understanding for me as an astrologer it's kind of putting the flesh on the bones in terms of you know where the nine are coming from and yeah it's, it's I've loved this discussion Magenta it's yes. been amazing me too and it, it's the same with me because it does seem as though it seems as though the nine are working with astrology, but because I'm not studied in astrology and, and I obviously wasn't meant to go into that. I've gone into this sort of, um, you know, messaging, being able to access them and bring down messages. And so training, if you will, as a medium or channel. But really, it's the same. It's the same thing. It's just another way of expanding the mind and, and discovering truth. So it is incredibly interesting and wonderful that we've picked up such similar symbolism. One of the things that they also say, which which marries up with you saying this is um, a return, a returning cycle. They say this is the time of the decoding of the metaphor. We must decode the metaphor um, and reclaim our symbolism. If you look at the trident, 
that's also yeah. been inverted by um you know darker myth mythical creature holding something with a with three prongs on a fork there are multiple ways that the true symbology has been inverted for so many years so that whenever a symbol is presented it instantly causes fear within the individual and creates this um superstition that has no substance to it just in order to control that pers that person now we reclaim the metaphor we reclaim the symbols and and put them back where they were originally intended to be which is of the light and present we're not presenting the antidote to the darkness we're moving back to the original because yeah. that's all that there ever was you can't actually take away the original the organic you can you can mask it you can superimpose on it but you can never change it or take it away and just as they are coming out into the open with all that they have so are we coming mm -hmm. out into the open with all we all that we have too and it's happening naturally and organically with us we haven't had yeah. to um, sit there and plan it all out and all get together and have a big plan about how we're going to um, bring light back to the world. It's just naturally flown through us all. Absolutely, and absolutely. And, you know, so it's immensely positive and immensely exciting to hear all this, um, Magenta. It really is. It's been it's been quite thrilling. So, so I really, you know, I'm aware of your time, your energy, and I, I just really want to thank you for taking the time because I think this will help people so much um, in their understanding of where we're heading. We're just, as you say, we're on this pinnacle and this precipice because it's no time at all until we yeah. get to that March equinox. And the better we prepare, the bigger the quantum jump we will have as individuals when we get Absolutely. to that point. Absolutely. And it's so important to prepare energetically with our thoughts and with our knowing and how we structure our space for this moment as it's a birthing point and, and an inception point as in a conception point. So it's the, the, the conception is the very first thought of it. And there it is. And it's funny how you say it's March 21st because with, I think Mar specifically the equinox is supposed to be the 20th here in the UK, but it's the 21st that the nine have been presenting as the actual day one, the first day. But that's that's not the equinox. It's the it's the day after. Am I right that it's the twentieth? It depends year? where you are in the world, because yeah. you know in America, it, it, you know it's going to be it's going to be the twentieth. So it's staggered by by time zone. So for us, I think it's just the early hours. I haven't calculated the chart yet, but I believe for us, it's the it's the early hours. You know, oh, sort I of see. going over the twenty first. So oh, that um, makes sense, right? That makes sense. I'm sure we we will be joining the mass meditation in our regular sacred place and and celebrating and bringing it in. Yes, definitely. I will definitely be there. It's so lovely, and it's that's created such a structure now. But that's a whole other subject <laughs> but yeah that's that's absolutely really that. and that's wonderful because the person who created that ha didn't really have any idea of what was being created or why it was no, just no. A, a guidance and an intuition and I saw what it was and now having gone through the entire year through all the sabbats it's now gone up a notch into the next level of the creation and the meeting so it's gone up, it's really gone up an octave and and it's organically growing every time we get together in in mass numbers in love and gratitude yeah. it's jumping an octave jumping an octave and it's it's palpable isn't it you can really yeah. feel it in the land and people can and, do this uh, all across the world you, you don't have to be yeah. in the you know southern uk to do this wherever you are in the world even if you're only with one other person that's spiritually aware get together the two of you and just allow yourself to move into adventure and 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 follow your your whim and your guidance even if you're just sit, sitting meditating together and if you really don't know anyone who is spiritually aware connect with people online and if you yep. want to be on your own and you don't know anyone you can move into that structure completely by yourself just the Absolutely. fact that you are honoring the equinox in whatever way feels right to you even if it's just sitting burning some incense a candle sitting with crystals, whatever it may be. It's getting into the, the joy and the excitement of the fact that this is a seed point, birth point into everything that we have come here for, everything we've incarnated for to create this new time period, this, this, this return to the ancient way. 
um, where everything is not inverted and we have um, our freedom back. That's what it's about, our liberty. Absolutely. You're just, we're linking together as a family of frequency globally. Yes. We're holding hands digitally across the world, different, different nations, different languages. It doesn't matter. We're linking yes. together in the frequency of love. And that's what's Absolutely. important. Absolutely. Bless you, Magenta. That has been such fun. I've really loved it. Thank so, you. Um, Amazing to thank you. you. Yeah, thank you, thank you, and, and um, you know, thank you everyone for your time in listening, and um, really hope this helps you create your vision for New Earth. Thank you for listening, everyone. It's been really lovely. Bye for now. Bye. I am just so so happy to be able to announce to you that my new book is available. The Diamond Codex and the Quartz Key. Accessing the accelerated Stargate system through crystalline transformation of the genetic code. What does it mean to transmute one's DNA from carbon-based to crystalline within the context of spiritual enlightenment and physiological evolution? Practical templates for photonic light gene expression alchemical unification and light body activation are provided within this channeled transmission, delivering this codex at a time within humanity's awakening and expansion when synchronicity is abundant. The mysteries of the accelerated Stargate system as an intelligent living infinity structure call the starseeds of Earth to remember why they are incarnated here and what they came here to do. The downloads, epiphanies and realizations that will organically come to each starseed as they immerse themselves within this sacred text are catalysts for those memories. Introducing Dreamwalker, the story, presented through my interdimensional dialogue with the monadic light structure that is the white-winged collective consciousness of nine. This book has been such an absolute delight and joy to transcribe from the nine, and I truly hope you enjoy reading it. Available in paperback, hardcover, and Kindle. <laughs>